Hello! About four years ago I made my very first video stabilization unit that was really simple. It was just a cheap dollar store tripod with a pop can tied to the bottom. Just a second, gotta fix my collar so I don't look like a douche. The first stabilizer relied on the counterweight principle where you have your camera on the top, a counterweight on the bottom that weighs just as much as your camera, and you hold it at the exact center and the weights balance each other out and you end up with more stable footage. But a year after that I started working on a much more complicated version that was a really awesome super stabilizer. It did an amazing job of holding the video steady, but before I even finished that I started realizing it wasn't actually solving a problem I actually had. My biggest problem wasn't getting absolute perfect quality, it was convenience. Uh, I have all these studio lights that I never bother to use because it's a pain in the ass to set up. I have all this really nice audio equipment that I never use because it's a pain in the ass to set up. So after fiddling with things for a bit I realized I didn't need a do-it-yourself steady cam. I needed a do-it-yourself video multi-tool. I needed a tripod, steady cam, lights, and audio recorder holder all in one. A single unit that did everything. So I started working on what I call the Mark III. First and foremost, my camera. Audio field recorder. And three blocks of wood, some nuts and bolts, and four screws. Put on a dab of glue just to make it extra secure. The screws really just act as a clamp for the glue. So once it's dried, if you've done it right, you really can take these out. So it just goes over the bolts and, and it just gives you something big and makes this easier to spin. I thought this guy could use wings, because wings are awesome. Yay! Wings! Uses an extremely simple latch to hold it in place. General idea is when it's in use, they're locked in place. But when I want to store it, it's more compact and convenient. I've soldered two sections of 10 LEDs in parallel because that makes it a hell of a lot easier than figuring out the math and the voltage drop when they're in series. Since my battery is 850 milliamp hours, I've gone with 20 LEDs that draw 20 milliamps each, so this project should give me two hours of life. Took a chisel and carved out grooves on the inside slot. Just used a little bit of masking tape to hold them in place. I will epoxy them in permanently, but I'm just going to do an electronics test before I do anything permanent. So here's where I'm at on my video multi-tool. Constant current driver circuit, LiPo battery, charging thingy unit. Now that I've confirmed the electrical's good, everything is in a nice thick layer of hot glue. So, this is the first test of my fancy new video unit. The audio is not on it, but the light is. So I'm just holding at a comfortable pace, seeing how it looks. Alright, now I've set the white balance to daylight. I hope this turns out a little bit better than it did last time. We shall soon find out. How do I look? I made a little tray to hold the charger, the current driver, and the switch in place. I never intended for this to be a permanent unit. Its goal was to be used for a couple months for me to see what I liked, what I didn't like, and then improve it for the version 4. The primary goal for this unit is convenience over everything else. I want to think of it like a pocket knife multi-tool. It does everything well enough that it's worth carrying, but if you're really doing something full-time, obviously the real dedicated tool is going to do a better job of it. Saying that I don't want it to be like a lame multi-tool, I want it to be like an awesome multi-tool. Some of the problems with this version were the choice to use cool blue LEDs, which caused my skin tone to look 
quite terrible. It just it ended up not being that much more convenient because I had to go in and do color correction on every single shot. The way I designed this one, the audio recorder is placed upside down, so I have to remember to flip the left and right channels every single time, which I usually forget. Um, it's another little thing that should be done better if the primary goal is convenience. The LEDs I was using are good for um, 3 volts. The internal resistance in a LiPo battery is enough that I really don't need a resistor. The problem is a LiPo battery is 3.7 volts, and it didn't occur to me to just throw a diode in front, so I made this complicated little um, constant current driver circuit dealy. Uh, it's the better solution, but it's kind of over-engineered. What I'm looking to do in the version 4 is, number one, make the thing look less lame, because let's face it, this just, this isn't that pretty. I mean, look at that. It's just silly looking. I mean, it's, would you want to be out in public with a unit that looked like this? I really doubt it. So. I want to make it look a little, not, not professional, but less awful. Um, another step is I focus so much on the multi-tooliness of this and the uh, counterweight principle, I forgot entirely that um, a gimbal works a hell of a lot better. So I'm going to try to make this a proper steady cam with some uh, gimbling and things. For the next version, I want to have warm LEDs so I can get that Michael Bay look where it'll just make my skin look orange so the background will be blue when I set the white balance for my skin because, yeah, everyone needs more teal and orange. Another big problem that I had with this unit is the audio recorder. See, any vibrations or shakes travel through the object into the recorder and it makes awful handling noise. So. I'm going to throw in a shock mount, which I have a really simple idea for. So I hope that works. That's what my next version has in store.